I'm Lynn Brown. This is Ricardo Neri, Vibe of Shankar. Um, we're going to talk about optimizing Chromium. Um, this is sort of a um, follow on to a talk we had last year. These are some pieces of that uh, which you may find see familiar. Um, now, how do I go? Okay. Um, the, the output of the discussion in summary from last year was Vincent said, show value. And so that's pretty much what we're here to do today. Um, uh, we'd like to acknowledge um, Johnny and Gia on Chromium and uh, Srinivas, Rui, Noor on, um, uh, I'm gonna mention a thing called uh, low power mode daemon. Only in, to contrast it to what we're doing here, there's a whole talk on it in this room tomorrow afternoon. I encourage you to go there. It actually uses um, also um, CPU isolation, which I think is a talk on a little later in here today. And uh, Tim Chen and Chen Yu and Raphael for uh, direct uh, help with some of the scheduling stuff that we've done. All right, so um, this is sort of a decoder ring of the hardware that we have. Uh, the blue boxes are CPUs, bigger boxes are more powerful CPUs. Uh, Intel calls them P cores and E cores, I'll try to use that language. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the P cores are sort of double wide because there's HT, um, uh, other things to know about them is, unlike uh, an ARM Big Little, they have a significant overlap in their performance profiles. So those E-cores those e can run quite fast. They can use quite a lot of power, uh, not as much as the P-cores. And, and the P-cores, can, can, they can run slow and become quite power efficient, but not quite as power efficient as the as E-cores. The e um, what we're really focused on today, I think we're actually in a very good place on the performance part of, of this puzzle. ITMT works extremely well for that. Um, but uh, what we're trying to do today is harvest in particular the operating point where the E cores are running at low frequency and they're in an efficient place where the E core, the P cores cannot get to. Um, uh, let's see. Also, uh, there's, we're depicting tasks here in orange. So you've got a fully idle CPU would be all blue. Partially idle is, you know, sort of half used. And then this guy that's filled in would be fully busy. And then the guy with three tasks on there would be a run queue with what's running is on the bottom. We'll come back with some examples of this. In fact, here's one now. Um, okay, so the way ITMT works, if you're not familiar with it, is basically... Um, it's implemented exclusively in the idle load balancer. It's quite simple. There's a priority for CPU. Priority is based on our systems, um, on the, uh, the maximum turbo frequency. And yes, we can do it for more than a millisecond, Vincent. Um, and in this case, a, a P core wakes up and says, hey, I'm a higher priority CPU, who can I help? Oh, here's this, this poor um, um, uh, lower priority CPU we're gonna migrate a task, in this case, T2 off the back of the run queue from busy to destination. The reverse also happens. So destination can pull, can be an E-core pulling off of an HT sibling um, because uh, we get more throughput that way when we run on an E-core um, and uh, HT sibling is the, <coughs> is the lowest priority CPU in our system. All right. so. Aside from task placement, an important knob that we have is called EPP. It stands for Energy Performance Preference. And it comes with hardware P states. Um, HWP is how we do P states for the last um, several years on Intel. And uh, if you could get me a water bottle, that'd be great. Um, it's an architectural interface, which is important, which means it's enumerable. We don't have to. Um, uh, do any model specific work to know that it's there. However, its weakness is that the actual value that we plug into this register to say, do we want performance or do we want power? The value we put into that register is model specific. So if you ever see somewhere, and you will, um, where something is plugged into that register and we didn't check a model number first, that's a bug. All right, so how do we turn that into an interface that's actually usable by something that doesn't want to check model number? Um, Srinivas maintains the Intel um, uh, P-state driver. 
and if, hopefully that's legible, but it has a couple of words. It has performance, balance, performance, balance, power, and power. Performance means I only care about performance. I don't care about power at all. Power means I care about power only, and I really don't care about performance at all. The other two are in the middle. And that gets translated by the driver into the number that we plug into the EPP register. In this case, it's a per CPU um, property. And uh, as you can probably guess, that has some limitations. So one way it's used is say on your Ubuntu system, you have this dialogue called the power mode. And it says, hey, I want performance, I want power, I want something in the middle. It comes around and splat, it writes EPP on all CPUs to the same thing. And it doesn't change it. Um, that's okay for some things, but it's not okay for other things that we're gonna talk about more. Um, if all the tasks are the same need, you're good. Or if you're using the per CPU interface that I showed a second ago for the driver, not this power manager, you could say, hey, I'm gonna bind a bunch of tasks here and I'm gonna set their EPP to that. They're good, I'm gonna bind a bunch of tasks here and I'm gonna set the EPP to something else. That's good. It's just that this isn't really how people generally use our computers. Um, and now I'm going to pass it to Vibev, who's going to talk about the software we're running. Thank you. So I'll be covering, you know, the main question that was asked, you know, what's the value proposition of, uh, you know, using uh, EQS and how it can basically help, uh, you know, the Chromium browser use cases. So here in particular, what I'm going to show you is, you know, two popular use cases for low power on Chromium. One is video streaming, and the other one is basically video conferencing. So these are two popular use cases which people you know, generally use for video, I mean, for low power. So if you look at uh, you know, the low power KPIs, I want to demonstrate the value prop you know, using uh, you know, the following experiments. One is, you know, what's the impact of uh, SOC power by using EPP, task placement, and what's the effect of combining, you know, EPP and task placement? So let's start with the first use case, which is basically, you know, the video streaming part. Uh, and here, if you look at the CPU utilization for video streaming, it's very close to idle. So you're just doing simple decode, and and you're just, you know, sending the frames um, back at, at a particular cadence. Say in this case, I'm trying to run a YouTube clip, which is basically a 1080p. Uh, 24 FPS, uh, you know, clip, and 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 what I'm trying to see is, you know, with the current ITMT scheduler, you always compete for the P cores, right? So which is, you know, always high in power. So for this kind of workload, what you generally want is you want to always pick the efficient core, which is ide you know, ideally in this case it's E core, and by using E core, I'm going to demonstrate, you know, with different uh, power models that we have, what are the power savings that we get. Right okay, so this is the first experiment where we apply, you know, EPP across the system. And if you compare, if you if you look at the default uh, one, and and when you compare the other EPP settings, you know, which is performance and balance power, you can see that with performance kind of EPP, you're almost at two x power. So you're burning a bunch of power for delivering 1080p 24 fps kind of video playback. And, and then once you set balance EPP, you can see that I, I'm able to save roughly 16% of power, you know, uh, compared to the default. So for those of us who are not too familiar with the Intel architecture, uh, this EPP basically trying to affect how the firmware scales the CP frequency? Is that's that what it's doing? That's right. Okay. So you basically tell the firmware how aggressive you have to be okay. or how powerful. I have you. more thoughts on this, but I'll let you continue. On sure. That. Thanks. Just in, in this case, it's only about frequency scaling. The only yeah. impact there is. Yeah, I mean, okay. current EPP, is, you're just applying EPP across the system and you're trying to see, you know, are you oversubscribing the CPU frequency or what you're doing, you know, and what's the impact on SOC power? Keep going. And this is basically binding things on various cores. Uh, and you can see that, you know, if you run video streaming on one E cluster, you're able to save 19% power savings. And this is basically the effect of combining both EPP and task placement. And you can see I'm able to save roughly 26% compared to the default. 
right? And which is a big power savings. And if so, just moving on to the second use case, you know, this is video conferencing. So here I'm basically simulating a 1080p 30 FPS encode decode scenario. And in this case, Chromium browser is basically using software encode and decode because there are several options that we have and several browsers. So based on the features available, you basically offload it to the hardware or you do it on the CPU. So in this case, it's software encode and decode. Um, and, and the utilization here, if you look at the CPU utilization for video conferencing, it's basically at a moderate level. And as you add features like background blur or you know relighting and the camera framing, the utilization can go vary all the way from moderate to high. If you look at you know the first experiment of EPP, you can see that you know when I basically apply uh, you know balance power, I can save 70 percent of 70 to 72 percent of SOC power compared to the default, and this is basically highlighting you know frequency oversubscription problem that we have. And this is the next experiment of task binding. And if you basically run the same uh, Chromium threads on e cores, uh, you are able to save roughly 32% of power. And in this case, you are just combining both EPP and binding together, and roughly you are able to save 72% of the power compared to the default. So let me just pass on to Len here. All right. So this begs the question: you know, can you basically do what Vibif did manually? And, uh, and or what you know, power mode does manually? And the answer is sometimes yes. Um, but um, it, it only, um, it has some limitations. So when does it work? <coughs> it works for low power mode. Um, There's a chip that's coming out in a couple of weeks um, called Meteor Lake. In this case, we can basically turn off the compute die and run everything over, over in the corner on a couple of small CPUs. Works very well there. But that only works when you're very close to idle, when there's really no chance that you're going to impact performance. Um, this is implemented in low power mode daemon, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, but is system-wide orchestration the answer? Sometimes no. And when it's not the answer is when you get into an oversubscribed situation and briefly, um, whoops, and so here's a picture of one. So here we're running a couple of things, all which want you know, I want video over here, I want sound over here, I want, you know, interactive over here, and then you've got a hundred other tasks and they're all mixed into the same soup. If you treat them all together, somebody's going to fail. Eventually you'll add enough, enough load to the system where it will fail. And so this becomes a game of differentiating between the threads that really care about time and those that don't care about time, okay? And now we'll get into solution space, or at least prototype of solution space. I'll hand it to Ricardo halfway through. Um, so the way Chromium works is it can classify tasks and it can differentiate those tasks for us, okay? And then uh, what we just did is we plumbed it through SCED set adder, thank you, Peter Z. Um, and then we um, put a flag in the per task structure. And I'll let Ricardo describe what we do in the kernel. Yeah, essentially for the kernel, what we are doing is we are adding a new attribute for, for in task struct that can be, uh, that essential applications can use to define what level of QoS they require energy-wise. Uh, this, this interface, uh, architectures can in implement this interface in however, however way they wish they, it's, it's very implemented. In the case of Intel, we link this QoS level with the four levels that Len was describing, and uh, when do when do when we switch from one task to another, we read that parameter and we change it in whatever driver or whatever the architect needs to do. In our case, we we change the EPP value that that Len was describing in the beginning of the of the presentation. So that that level changes every time we switch to a task. It changes on whatever is the preference of the currently running task. Um, so that works at, on all of the CPUs, but we also can leverage the differences in, in the VF in the VF curve of the and the performance and, and power curve of, of, of the of CPUs, uh, which are different for P cores and E cores. And what we do essentially here is a sort of uh, 
uh, reverse async packing for internet hybrid processors we use itmt uh, uh, which is essentially which essentially traduces itself onto the scheduler as async packing scheduling which cpus ha have hard priorities and uh, when the cpu is going to be become idle it will pull tasks from lower priorities so what happens here is that we have now uh, flow towards higher priority CPUs, which in this case is T1. This is a regular task with a, a maybe a, a, a performance biased uh, preference of quality, of quality of service, and it will go to higher higher performance CPUs. In this in this case, are the big CPUs, and then we have here an energy efficient task in which we do the reverse, uh, a lower priority CPU. When it goes idle, it will find that task and will move it to a lower priority CPU. You just ask a quick question. Question? Yes. We have to skip the question because we need to show the punchline. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Hold, hold, hold your question. Yeah. Okay. We only have three minutes, then we have to we have to show the last three slides. So what we have here is the uh, um, essentially how it looks here. What we have here is the as tasks start running, they go to the big CPUs and then to the E cores and lastly to the HD siblings. Uh, here is the reverse. We have a key uh, here number of tasks of energy efficiency, quality of service, and they start populating the 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 E cores. And one of the e all of the E cores are busy. They start only only then they start going to the big CPUs. And yeah, this is your part. Thank you, Ricardo. So this is a small demo that we did, or a POC that we did, uh, you know, using the Chromium browser, where we implemented, you know, the EQOS thing. So whatever I did manually in the previous experiments, here we are doing it using the uh, browser automatically. So here, what we are trying to apply is per task EPP, and and the second one is EQOS, where you basically say, okay, this is a efficiency task, move all the tasks to the E core. So this is basically done by applying balance efficiency EPP settings. So when, when Plumbers is about discussion here, not uh, for microconferences, the question has to be asked. So I know you wanted to do this, but still, Plumbers is about not presentations, it's about discussion. You're not here to basically, so that's why I want to know the discussion to go through. If he has a question. I'm sorry, this. but we just hadn't gotten to the point yet, and so I didn't know more questions. It doesn't well, matter. It doesn't matter. Go the ahead. thing is, this is 10 minutes was supposed to be for a presentation, 10 minutes about discussion. I said that you were here. Go I'm ahead. Like, Go ahead. Ask the question. Yes, please. We're, we're talking about asking. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, thanks for that. Like, so, like, actually, I have similar work done in the onboard for, like, the task placement and the DVFS, where, like, the responsiveness of the scheduler, where, like, we migrate too quickly and the DVFS is basically doesn't take into account, like, generally the scheduler have a constant response. And, like, regardless, you have a very powerful chip or not a very powerful, like, a very underpowered chip, we have a constant response and we end up with the, the effect that you are seeing where you could save power by, by not using the frequency too much, but it's attributed to this aggressive behavior. And on the... Uh, <clears throat> The head, like the EQS thingy, like I, I heard like saying like it's related to architecture specific and I have issue with that because what we really want to achieve is enable portable software to be written where it doesn't matter if it's running on Intel, running anywhere else. And if we have to make that QS depend on architecture doing their own thing, like I think like when the user develop, like the application developers wants to use it, they will get very confused. And that will make it really very hard to, to pick up and like we start creating libraries where we can tell like, hey, I really don't care what the system is. It's just like, as long as That's I- That's a great point. Support. And uh, last year we started with the uh, architecture independent API. That's actually where this entire discussion started. We didn't really talk about it today, but on top of this, that's exactly what Chromium is using. <laughs> Yeah, but like I think from the kernel point of view as well, like the hint uh, needs to to be implemented in such a way that uh, like well, like if the library has to be to, to know about the architecture specific, like we we will lose some points. Great point. Yeah, Understood. Does we have any great break time? And then um, my view on the whole thing is that Intel is trying to do all of the devious decision in the former without taking into account the task details. It's not, it's trying to figure this out by doing CPU utilization, you're trying to do DVFS. 
instead of looking at task utilization. I think that is the biggest problem. All of these problems are basically related to how fast you can react when you migrate. For big thread migrates, you take a long time to ramp up. That's why you need the performance mode. If it's a little thread migrates, you don't want to ramp up quickly, and that's why you need the power save mode. Start tracking task utilization, let the kernel handle it. Don't push it away to firmware. That's my opinion on that. Basically, we can continue. That's what the chats are for. Emails, we can continue at the one. Uh, was that more? Yeah. It's, I think, I have to go for it. Right now. So. <laughs>